Hi, my name is Randy Schrader. The topic for this discussion is teaching you how to master the art of the invitation. And I'd like to share with you a little bit of the background and what creates or what gives rise to this content. When I first got involved in the direct selling industry these many years ago, the candid reality is that when I approached people and asked them if they wanted to learn what I was involved in, the refrain was too frequently not one of enthusiasm and eagerness to hear. I finally discovered that there is a skill, a skill which we can all develop, which will cause those people with whom we communicate to have an eager anticipation, not just willingness, but an eager anticipation to open their eyes, their ears, and their hearts to the message that we choose to share with them with Canaway. And I determined that among the various skills required for success, there is no single skill that can be placed at a greater importance. And for so many years in my career, I taught that mastering the art of the invitation was in fact the single most important skill. A quick recap, what are those skills? And by the way, the skills, they would mirror the revenue producing activities. The first revenue producing activity and assigned skill is to not just create a candidate list, but to learn to so live our lives so that a candidate list grows in front of us. If we learn to so live our lives such that we're constantly in association with people, then we have the opportunity to exercise this next skill, to utilize the skill of knowing what to say and knowing what not to say so that our candidate will in fact be open to hear. They'll have receptive ears. They'll have an open mind to the possibility of what we have to offer. It's the art of the invitation. A simple, a rudimentary inviting skill will cause a person to become willing to listen. When one has a well-developed skill, he or she will have a certain eagerness to listen. When we, the recruiting distributor, when we who are the bearers of the message have mastered the art of the invitation, we can then have a positive and proper expectation that our candidate will have an eager anticipation to hear what we have to offer and they will be looking with their eyes open as to what's in it for him or for her. There can be no more emphasis is placed upon skill development than this one. And then, of course, once we develop the skill of mastering the art of the invitation, we'll have a vibrant candidate list always because we develop the skill of having a candidate list grow in front of us. We will have learned what to say and what not to say so that our candidate wants to hear, wants to see the fullness of the Canaway message. And then we must develop the skill of learning how to present the business in a fashion that can duplicate. That's another thought. It's another discussion. It's not the principal focus of this, of this audio file. And then, of course, it's to learn how to properly follow up and how to get new members started utilizing a universal language, a 10-step language, the 10 steps which are found in the Getting Started Workbook, which is conveniently located in your Canaway back office. Now, let me first state that in my entire career and all of my experience in this industry, I have never had a thought, an idea that was so well received as this thought and idea. People want to hear the Canaway message. They want to hear about this remarkable new health component, not a new health component, but a new health component that's becoming now more readily understood and known, that being of cannabidiol CBD, because people want to hear about it. The good news is this, we get a chance to become more profitable more quickly with a relatively less well-developed inviting skill. We get a little bit of a pass. We get a chance to develop the skill because we have an open and receptive audience. And so at the very beginning, what do I propose that you do? What is the first invitation? It is the invitation that I have used so frequently since earlier this year when I determined that Canaway is the place that I would plant my flag when I became convinced that the single greatest opportunity of my life in this direct selling industry is represented by what Canaway has to offer. And I began with this simple thought. I began by simply having a electronic communication. And I'm telling you exactly the way that I've rolled this business out. It's worked so extraordinarily well, and I invite you to do the same. My first interactions were electronic. It was not a telephone call. The art of the invitation is most, most specifically utilized when we are face-to-face -face or in live communication as opposed to electronic communication. But my first communications were this simple thought. It was sending a text to people that I knew or who knew me, that I knew of or who knew of me, um, not too big a filter there, not too big a screen, sending a text to people and simply saying, what do you know about CBD and its corresponding health possibilities? Maybe that became broadened or, or oftentimes that became broadened quickly to what do you know about CBD, its corresponding health values and the resulting income opportunity. 
And I will tell you that never in my entire career in this industry have I had such a huge percentage of people respond to that simple query with an eagerness to know more. In fact, it's been a fascination for me. I wish that I were with you right now. I've kept a lot of the text streams on my, on my phone, and I can go back and I can show this simple message. I, as I describe it, lobbed the ball across the net. What do you know about CBD? And back across the net in, the, in a return text came three paragraphs. I send over a sentence. What came back were three paragraphs. I send over a sentence and what came back was a page. It's been fascinating. The current is so extraordinarily powerful. And so the first thing that I want you to know with clarity, my deepest belief is that in this particular instance, it is not so much about how well we do this as it is about how much of it we do. If we give a lot of people the opportunity to opt in or to opt out of further discussion, my experience is that the vast majority will opt in. And as they opt in, we then get to uh, bring to the equation our other knowledge and our skills and our personal characteristics and, and all that makes us who we are. But first, my, the vast majority of my early interactions were a text message. And so, by the way, the size of your candidate list is the size of your entire telephone address book. In this particular case of cannabidiol, because the health properties are so profound, it is everyone. In this case, for the first time in my career, in this case, it is everyone. There is no filter and there is no screen. There's not someone who's too old and would therefore be off the candidate list and shouldn't receive that message. There's no one who's too young and therefore should be X'd off that list. There's no one who's too successful. There's no one who's not successful enough. There's no one who's too physically fit and there's no one who's not physically fit enough. Uh, it's everybody. And so your immediate preliminary candidate list is equal to the size of your telephone address book at least added to the size of all of your social media friends and or contacts added to all of the people you have daily interaction with who for whatever reason are not on one of those groups that I've described. And so for me, it started out with this simple query, what do you know about CBD and the resulting health benefits or the corresponding health benefits? That was the first query. Now that's about the easiest way to invite that I have ever seen. I have not seen something so simple. What do you know about CBD and the corresponding health benefits? And when the, when the ball came back across the net, as I describe it, then I selected the tool. And the whole purpose of learning how to invite is knowing what to say and knowing what not to say so that we can get out of the way and let a tool do the talking, not us. Remember that every single thing that we do in this business is teaching someone else what they must do. If I have my first interaction with any candidate and I talk for 30 minutes or for 40 minutes and I expound all of this knowledge, I just taught them some very incorrect things. The first thing I taught them was that every introductory, every introductory action would take 30 minutes because that's what I just did with them. And now the person who's busy, who has little time to invest in this project at the outset until they become profitable in it, they just weeded themselves out. Because instead of saying a little bit and letting a tool talk, I made the mistake of saying a lot. And I proved to them in that interaction that they didn't have time to do it. The next thing was as they listened to me and I'm delivering all of this information that no doubt I think is brilliant, uh, they're saying to themselves, well, I don't know those things and I haven't got time to learn it and maybe I don't have the exact same power of expression that this person, Randy, does or whoever's inviting me. And, and so once again, I'm teaching a person they can't do it. But when instead I send a simple text message that is this simple, what do you know about CBD and the corresponding health benefits? I just taught them they do have time because it takes no time time. And the next interaction proves to them they can do it with their existing knowledge bank with very few changes because when the ball comes back across the net, I then filter the response to find out was the interest one that would lead me more to a business discussion or was the interest one that would lead me more to further validation of the product. And then I select one of the audio or video resources which are available in your Canaway back office. I choose which one to send next. Typically, once again, a very, very short interaction. That is a great question. Thanks for your response. I think that this will help. And then I send along a file and I make a, a, a simple introductory thought to it. For example, 
If the question, if the first query that I send is, what do you know about CBD and the corresponding health values? Then what comes back is, gosh, I have great interest in CBD. What do you know? Or, or here's a question or a comment that I think requires some clarification. Then at that point, I will choose one of the Stuart Titus video messages. I will choose the one perhaps that says Stuart Titus presents medical evidence, or I may select the one where Stuart describes in greater detail all of the histories of hemp. These can be found in your back office. They can also be found on randystrader.com. I will select the tool that effectively addresses the question. If someone responded in a more affirmative way or showed greater interest in the opportunity to make money as a result of what CBD is, then I may very well send the mechanics of money in Canaway. I might send the company's corporate compensation plan tool. But the point is, I say as little as I must to get out of the way and let a tool talk. I then get the response back. I again say as little as I must to get out of the way and let a tool talk, recognizing that our every single interaction is teaching that next person what he or she will be doing if they join us and if they correctly understand, wow, I could do this. I could do this with the tight time constraints that I have, or I could do this even though I don't have a deep working knowledge of how money works in direct selling. Or I could do this even though I lack the ability to express myself um, in, a, in a fluid and open manner and this kind of thing. I could do this even though I never sold anything to anybody and don't envision myself ever selling anything to anybody. The whole purpose then of learning how to invite is learning what to say and learning what shall be the medium with which we express ourselves. Is it a text message? Um, I will tell you, by the way, that very, very seldom would it be an open broadcast on social media. Um, I can only contemplate and consider myself when I feel that I'm being talked to as one of a crowd. You're very, very very unlikely to get my attention. When you're speaking to me as an individual, then there's a much, much greater chance. And so an individual text, not a group text, an individual private message on one of the social media platforms, whether it be Twitter or Facebook or Snapchat or WhatsApp or whichever one you're using, an individual message and the likelihood of success I've learned goes up dramatically when it's not just what do you know about CBD and the corresponding health values when it becomes, hey, John, it was great seeing you on the golf course last week. Say hi to Mary when you can. And by the way, what do you know about CBD and the corresponding health values? You see, a personalized message will have a completely different response to one that feels like perhaps you were just cutting and pasting and sending the same thing to countless people, even if I might be the only one on the individual copy line. And so it's, hey, John, it was fantastic seeing you at wherever I was. Hey, Mary, it was so fun to see you. Gosh, you looked beautiful and so did your children. It was so cool to see how happy you and John looked together when I saw you at church last Sunday. Wow, what a joy it was seeing you last week at the park and how fantastic your family looked. What do you know about CBD and the corresponding health values? Or we can broaden that a little bit more as we begin to develop our skills somewhat further. Now it becomes... Gosh, it was fun seeing you. I enjoyed our conversation. And you made a comment that made me think perhaps I should send you the following link. As I send it, I post to you this question. What do you know about CBD and the corresponding health benefits and the resulting income opportunity? You see, I just taught you one of the very, very important things about learning to master the art of the invitation. It can start so very simply. It can be so simple, a simple one line. What do you know about CBD and the corresponding health values? We can start there because of the power of this message. And then we can begin to add and develop further that thought, which increases the likelihood of the person reviewing the file with eager anticipation of what's in it for him or her. When we make the message personal, and this demands what? It demands that we listen. One of the great challenges that I see people observing and experiencing in our business is we have a message to tell, and by golly, we're going to tell it. Quite frequently, before the message makes any sense, we need to listen. I think that oftentimes we fall into the trap of speaking more than we should and listening less than we must. We simply must listen. I find that one of the greatest advantages that I have in having a well-developed inviting skill is that I listen to others and I hear it when they say that they're dissatisfied with, they with what they currently do for a living. I listen and I hear it when I hear them say that they have a fear 
in their heart for someone's health and their family and some experiences going on. I listen. And then at the right moment, maybe not at that same time, quite likely at some future date, gosh, Jim, I remember our conversation when I bumped into you at the supermarket last week, and I remember your discussion about how little time you have to spend with your children, and that's popped into my mind a couple of times, and it, it brought to mind the question, what do you know about CBD and the corresponding health benefits? I'm involved with such an extraordinarily cool project. I'd like to send you a link for review. In fact, here it is. You see, we can start out with the very most simple, basic, what do you know about? And then we can incorporate some listening skills into it. We can personalize the message when we have mastered the art of the invitation. We have now made this an information delivery where the individual receiving the message correctly perceives that we care about whatever's going on in his or her or their lives. They correctly perceive that we believe based on our understanding of that situation that we have a solution to the problem. And by the way, when we finally wind it all down, it is about identifying a problem and identifying a solution to the problem. If we can identify a problem, clarify what the problem is, and then introduce a solution to that problem, we just became the way out. And when we are the way out, this becomes a very, very easy task. This is not a difficult business. This is an easy business. If you want to make it easy, easy, easy for you, then master the art of the invitation. Now let's extend it a little bit beyond these uh, technological methods of information delivery. Um, I live a life where I'm in constant interaction with real people, and that's intentional. I like to be around real people. Um, I like my privacy too. I like moments of solitude. But I like to be around people. And so when I'm around people, if I'm going to spend multiple hours on a golf course with an individual, um, then is would it be really congruent, do you suppose, to say, well, what do you know about CBD and the corresponding health benefits and then end it at that point? Uh, believe it or not, the answer is yes. If, um, In fact, I will play golf with people that I don't know one day next week. And, and when I do, I will refrain from bringing up the concept early in that experience because I don't want to get drawn into a four-hour conversation. If I get drawn into a four-hour conversation, I will teach people so many things that are wrong about how to correctly do this business. Towards the very end, if I'm playing golf with three people and I only know one of them, by the time we get to around the 16th hole, when it's coming to its conclusion, I will then express, I will repeat back something that I have learned from them over the course of these past hours together. John, uh, I was so impressed with the things that you told me about what you're doing in your field of endeavor. I was so impressed with what you told me about the way that your company has responded to the changes in technology. I was so impressed about the way that you've told me you are helping and supporting your children in their endeavors. I was so impressed with. Now, folks, the one thing about this that is critically important, it must be true, it must be sincere. If I don't find something about an individual that I find extraordinarily impressive or encouraging, if I can't sincerely compliment them, uh, I may still choose to involve them in my business, but I'd use a very different inviting technique. What I really want is to involve people in our business who when they join the business, the business is better because of their involvement. Now we can all do that because we can learn, grow, develop, and become. We can become more, we can develop skills, we can develop character attributes, we can ultimately add great value to the company. And I'm looking to add value to those people's lives who so desperately need this. But I'm also looking to bring people into our business who the very moment they join, our company is better as a result of who they are and their past life's experiences and successes. That demands that I listen. And so, John, I was so impressed. I loved hearing the stories that you told about the way that you're impacting your business. I loved hearing the stories you told about the way your company is improving its particular field. I loved hearing the way that you described to me the values that you're adding to people's lives. And it, it brings to mind the thought that you and I share some important commonalities. And I would like nothing more than to send you a link or two so you can understand a bit more about my business, may I send you that link. Now, folks, what I just described to you was something quite different than sending someone a simple text that said, what do you know about CBD? And so you see, because of the power of the CBD message, because of the power, the flow, the undercurrent in American culture about what CBD is, we can start with this very simple, rudimentary, non-face-to-face, -face, simple, uh, behind the screen, uh, simple text. And I promise you that if you do enough of that, if you do enough of it, 
If you do enough of that, you will have a large enough number of people who lob that ball back across the net. You'll be able to start engaging in dialogue. And as you begin to engage in dialogue, before you know it, you'll develop a certain set of skills and confidence and poise that perhaps now you don't have. Or if you already have those skills and confidence and poise, it'll be a very, very uh, a simple and a fast process for you to turn that into um, accessing certain parts of the compensation plan. But then as we go forward, as we, as we go forward and begin to become aware, begin to become constantly aware of all those with whom we interact. When we develop the skill of listening, I become convinced that learning how to invite has as much to do with learning how to listen and hear. I want to hear what's going on in other people's lives, because if I hear what's going on in other people's lives, then at some time later in the conversation, maybe later in the week, maybe later in the month, but at some time later, I can then interact and it might then be an electronic interaction. In the example of the golf course, if I'm with somebody for four hours, then it's very logical and it's easy as the round comes to a conclusion to say, you know, I, I, I remember the conversation we were having a few holes back and, and how fascinated I am and, and how impressed I am with the things that you're doing in your company and your business and the techniques that you described to me. And, um, you know, I, I would really enjoy having some of those skills being expressed in our own company, our own business. And, um, I would just love to have you open your eyes to what we're doing. I'm involved in a, a really, really cool project. Uh, it's called Canaway. We're involved in the development of CBD, a non-psychoactive cannabinoid, and I would love to hear what you think about the project. May I send you a link? Now, you see, even that, that was a fairly complex invitation. It was an invitation that rolls immediately off of my tongue. Why? Because I've been doing this for years and years and years, and because I have said similar things so many times. I got involved with Canaway only a short period of time ago, but I have been very, very, very aggressively involved in the project since then, and I have said something very much like what you just heard me say many, many, many times. And at that point, when the person comes back, well, that, that sounds kind of cool, and they want to draw the conversation conversation out. I say, you know what? I want to respect the fact that we're on the golf course and I want you to finish playing well and so do I. Let me just send you the link and let's chat afterwards. We're not on the golf course. Is that fair? That's what I do. I do not let it get drawn into a discussion because that is not how to invite. Remember that every single thing that we're doing is teaching someone else how to do it. And as I live my life, and this goes into this category of step number six, so living my life so that my candidate list grows in front of me, I moments ago described a situation where I'd be playing golf with three people, one person I know well and two people I've never met yet met. That will happen next week. You see, I get a chance to choose how often do I do things like that. One of the mistakes that I see people making as I digress a bit, the step number six, creating a candidate list, uh, they, um, they want to make it hard. Well, I don't make it hard. If I want to have new candidates, I can go and play golf with people I don't know yet. If I want to have new candidates, then I can go to a basketball game and I can meet people on my right and on my left and the row below me and the row in front of me and the one that's in line. At the, and, and, and by the way, when I go there and immediately spew all this stuff about my company and what I do for a living, I just lost any chance of success. But when I go there and I listen and tell somebody, make some positive, affirming comment about what I heard when I'm polite, when I have just, just basic social instincts and I act upon them appropriately, then I have a chance to call someone a, a week or 10 days later or the next day and say, gosh, you know, it was so fun meeting you, or it was so fun seeing you again, or it was so great being at whatever with you. And I remember when you said, people love to hear us comment and affirm and validate the fact that we listen to what they said. I listened to what you said, and I've thought about it a few times. And when you made this comment, it brought to my mind this thought. There very, very well may be a solution, and that solution could be one that's an income-oriented solution. It may be one that is a product-oriented solution, but I heard what you said, and I've mulled it over a little bit, and it brought to mind the thought that perhaps you'd have interest in reviewing a link that helps you understand the uh, health opportunities and or resulting income opportunities of CBD or cannabidiol. May I send you the link? Now, folks, I could go on and on and on. If we develop a very simple rudimentary inviting skill, then we'll have reason to believe that a significant number of people will open their eyes and their ears to the possibility of getting involved with you in Canaway as a consumer or as a business builder. If we have a well-developed inviting skill, then we can have reason to believe that people will not just look, but they will begin to look with a positive, immediate interest. They won't just look out of curiosity, but they'll look with a positive, immediate interest interest. When you have mastered the art of the invitation, when you know intuitively what to say and what not to say, when you link, and by the way, a proper invitation is brief, 
it is affirming of the other person, it is rigorously honest, it is completely candid, and it guides a person to take a very simple action. If you want to get told yes, then ask people to do simple things. If I invite person, if I invite a person to come to a business presentation and it's 50 miles away, well then I can expect people to tell me no. And I can expect some number of those who tell me yes to also behave no. But if I ask people to do something very simple, can you watch this link? It's seven minutes long. If I send you a link now, can you review it in the next few moments? It's only five minutes long. See, if I want the answer and the action to be yes, then I must propose an action that is easy to say yes to and an easy action to take now. And by the way, this idea of learning how to invite or mastering the art of the invitation, we're inviting to do what? We're inviting to let a tool talk. And then by extension, after we learn how to invite to let a tool talk, we learn then how to invite that candidate who has reviewed the tool. We then learn how to invite to come to a private small group presentation, a home business review, a private business screening where a person is given a chance to see how we present the business. And as we go through this process every step of the way, I simply ask the the candidate or the proposed entrant into our business if they could imagine themselves doing what we've done so far. Gosh, do you remember, Tom, I bumped into you at the supermarket and, and it was when you said, you see, when you said, when I heard you comment on, when you said, this is magic, when you said that this was experience in your life, that brought to my mind this thought. And uh, because that was true, I, I sent you that text and asked what you knew about what you'd known or heard about CBD. And, and um, after you reviewed a simple link, that resulted in you being here this evening. And you've seen me push play on a handful of videos. Um, can you just cross the bridge with me in an imaginary way right now and imagine that you're involved in Canaway? Could you imagine yourself doing the same thing? See, there was nothing about this that was uncomfortable. There was nothing about this that was difficult. Um, when you and I had interaction, I heard you say, and when I heard you say that, over the course of the next day or two, the thought came to my mind that perhaps this would be valuable to you to know. And so I asked you what you knew about CBD and you reviewed a simple link. And that results in you being in my home here this evening and together we've pushed play on a few videos and, and now you've got some products in your hands to try. Could you, could you see yourself in that same environment? And so you see, we, we wrap this art of the invitation into the overall process of our business, recognizing that those simple skills and revenue producing activities are that we create a candidate list and then we learn how to live our life so that candidate list grows in front of us. We learn how to invite and that simply means we learn what to say and what not to say so we can get out of the way and let a tool talk. We then further that knowledge of how to invite so we invite a person to participate in a home business presentation. And by the way, when I invite someone to participate in that home business presentation, I always tell them the truth. The truth is that on every Tuesday night, we invite a small handful of friends over. Now, I may tell them that every Tuesday night we do that, but I tell them this Tuesday night we do. I never tell someone something that's not the truth, but because I want them to come tonight, I may not say that we're doing it every Tuesday night. On the invitation, I may very well say, you know, Tuesday night, I'm having a handful of friends over to our house, over to our home, so that we can share the message that you learned a little bit about when you reviewed that first link. And um, when I contemplate um, the people who are coming and I consider who you are, I think you'd add a whole lot to the chemistry of the room. I think it'd be a beautiful way for you to see what we're doing. Um, what I can assure you is that we'll start on time, we'll end on time. If you could be at our home at around 7.15, we'll try to be all wrapped up at around 8.30 and it would really be great. You would be a great addition to an inclusion in the room. I think it'd be a beautiful way for you to, to see the business. Um, can you be there? I need to ask that question, can you be there? And I then need to be quiet. I need to wait and I need to listen. Can you be there? If the person tells me I will try, then I need to understand what they just said is, no, I will not be there. If they say, I think I'll be there, I need to understand. They just said, there's absolutely no way on this planet that I'm going to be there. It's when they say, yes, Randy, I will be there. And if anything is going to change, I will be in touch and let you know. So when it's John, uh, thank you so much for reviewing the link. I'm, I'm glad that it struck your, that it struck your interest cord further. Um, we're having a handful of people over to our home. Samantha and I would love to have you attend. I think that, that who you are, you would add such a wonderful chemistry to the room. There'll just be five or six of us. Um, can I count on you being there? Can you be at our home at around 7.15? And then I need to be quiet and I need to listen. And if it's anything I think I might, it's possible, then I need to understand they're telling me no. 
that is not a challenge for me, people. I am looking for people who are looking. I am looking for those who want what I have. And there are a lot of people who find it easier to say I might instead of saying no, I won't. Because if they say no, I won't, they incorrectly believe that I might try to convince them. And I don't try to convince anybody of anything. There are lots of people who want what we have lots and lots of people who don't love what they do for a living and they're looking for a way out. There are lots and lots of people who understand that, and if they didn't understand before they saw our material, now they do, that there's something very, very special with CBD. I am looking for people who are looking, but what I demand is that I know who's going to be in the room. I want to know who's going to be there. And so I pose the question, can I count on you being there? May I set a place at the table for you? Can I be assured you'll arrive by 715? And then I listen. And if it's anything short of an absolutely yes, Randy, I'll be there, then I understand that. And I don't try to twist it. I don't try to turn it. I don't, I don't try to convince. I'm looking for people who are looking. And as you'll discover in step number eight, successfully conducting private business screenings, I mean, when we have done enough preliminary inviting and letting the tool talk enough times each week, then we have reason to believe that we can have five or six or optimally seven people show up at our home on a Tuesday night or a Wednesday or Thursday whenever you do it and that gives us a chance to practice the next skill we push plan a video and grant people the simple opportunity to opt in or to opt out and by the way this entire process the entire 10 step process focused on step six create a candidate list step seven learn how to invite extending that to the master of the art of the invitation step eight learn how to present the business in a fashion that can duplicate and step nine learn how to effectively follow up and do new member orientations all of this couch within the 10 step process is simply designed to help each new person arrive at his or her point of logical conclusion in the shortest possible period of time. It is not designed to convince anyone of anything. It's not designed to change anyone's mind. It is simply designed to grant the people the opportunity to see who we are, what we offer, and to opt in or to opt out. And it's an absolutely beautiful thing. I am so grateful that I found my way to Canaway. I don't just like this company. I love it. I don't just like the product line. I love it. I don't just like the compensation plan. I love it. I don't just like the culture. I love it, and this is, uh, it's breathed new life in many respects into my career. I have a new joy. I have a joy and an enthusiasm. A, um, I have a spring in my step, a smile on my face, and a song in my heart, and that's all pretty good stuff, isn't it? And part of the reason that's true is because uh, while I will never arrive, I can say with some confidence that I have mastered the art of the invitation, and that makes this relatively easy. Uh, to that end, I invite you to listen to this not one time, but again and again and again and again and again. Listen to it so many times that you know automatically the next word that's going to come out of my mouth. Having listened, then you imagine those various environments and scenarios as I did. Imagine other environments and scenarios. And then imagine your invitation. You say it into a, into a recording device. And then listen to what you sound like as compared to what I sound like. I'm willing to bet. And by the way, I don't mean my squeaky little funny voice. I mean the confidence, the certainty, the conviction. The, uh, the smile on my face. I'm hoping that as we went through this, I'm hoping that you felt me smiling because I have been. I'm hoping that as we went through this, that you had a complete certainty that I believe what I'm saying is true and accurate and adds value to people's lives. When people hear in you a belief that you have something for them, when they hear a smile on your face, when they hear an eagerness, a, uh, a, a conviction that what, what he or she has to offer is for you and it's good, man, it makes you want to hear, doesn't it? And so if you want to master the art of the invitation, I encourage you to imagine these various relationships as I have and imagine the interactions as I have. Speak into a recording device and listen to yourself and then ask yourself this candid question. If I heard this relationship using these words with this amount of confidence and posing these requested actions of me, would I do it or would I not? And then I would practice, I would practice, I would practice, and I would rehearse until the answer became yes. And by the way, when I was first um, taught to, to invite and when I learned how to be scripted, I was really uncomfortable with that because I thought scripted, man, actors and actresses use scripts. And, and doesn't that mean that it's not right and it's not, that it's not real, but it is imaginary? And, and then I learned that that's just not the truth. To be scripted simply means that one's prepared. 
That's what it means. It means we're prepared. We know what we will say. We know what we will not say. We know why we will say what we will say. And we will know why we will not say what we will not say. All of it being designed to get out of the way, to let a tool talk, to grant each person the single greatest positive opportunity to see what we really have to offer. Because I believe all of the way to the center of my being, clear to the very bottom of my gut, that we have a gift here to offer to people. So let us develop properly the skills required to make sure that people that are important to you, that you are important to, get a chance to see it with clarity. Don't just learn to invite, master the art of the invitation. I'll see you along the way.